This episode is brought to you by IVP. Do you feel exhausted by the noise and chaos of the digital age? In the Digital Examine podcast from IVP, author and pastor J.Y. Kim converses with leaders, pastors, and scholars who are seeking to reorient their lives around peace and self-reflection. Join them as they tune their hearts and minds to hear the voice of God in all its clarity, kindness, and strength. Watch The Digital Examine on the IVP YouTube channel or listen on your favorite streaming platform. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Numbers chapter 29 through chapter 30. Blowing Trumpets On the first day of the seventh month, you are to hold a holy assembly. You must not do your ordinary work, for it is a day of blowing trumpets for you. You must offer a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One young bull, one ram, and seven lambs, one year old, without blemish. Their grain offering is to be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil. Three-tenths of an ephath for the bull, two-tenths of an ephath for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. With one male goat for a purification offering to make an atonement for you. This is in addition to the monthly burnt offering and its grain offering and the daily burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings as prescribed, as a sweet aroma, a sacrifice made by fire to the Lord. The Day of Atonement On the tenth day of this seventh month, you are to have a holy assembly. You must humble yourselves. You must not do any work on it. You must offer a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. One young bull, one ram, and seven lambs, one year old all of them without blemish. Their grain offerings must be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil, three-tenths of an ephath for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs, along with one male goat for a purification offering. In addition to the purification offering for atonement and the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. The Feast of Temporary Shelters On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you are to have a holy assembly. You must do no ordinary work, and you must keep a festival to the Lord for seven days. You must offer a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Thirteen young bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs, each one year old, all of them without blemish. Their grain offerings must be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil, three-tenths of an ephath for each of the thirteen bulls, two-tenths of an ephath for each of the two rams, and one-tenth for each of the fourteen lambs, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the second day, you must offer twelve young bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish, and their grain offerings and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the third day, you must offer 11 bulls, two rams, 14 lambs, one year old, all without blemish, and their grain offerings and their drink offerings for the bulls, 
for the rams and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering. In addition to the continual burnt offering, with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the fourth day, you must offer ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs one year old, all without blemish, and their grain offerings and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering, with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the fifth day, you must offer nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish, and their grain offerings and their drink offerings for their bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering, with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the sixth day, you must offer eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs, one year old all without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the seventh day, you must offer seven bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish, and their grain offerings and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering, with its grains offering and its drink offering. On the eighth day, you are to have a holy assembly. You must do no ordinary work on it, but you must offer a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. One bull, one ram, seven lambs, one year old, all of them without blemish. And with their grain offerings and their drink offerings for the bull, for the ram, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. These things you must present to the Lord at your appointed times, in addition to your vows and your free will offerings, as your burnt offerings your grain offerings, your drink offerings, and your peace offerings. So Moses told the Israelites everything, just as the Lord had commanded him. Vows Made by Men, Chapter 30 Moses told the leaders of the tribes concerning the Israelites, This is what the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath of binding obligation on himself, he must not break his word, but must do whatever he has promised. Vows Made by Single Women If a young woman who is still living in her father's house makes a vow to the Lord or places herself under an obligation, and her father hears of her vow or the obligation to which she has pledged herself, and her father remains silent about her, then all her vows will stand, and every obligation to which she has pledged herself will stand. But if her father overrules her when he hears about it, then none of her vows or obligations that she has pledged for herself will stand, and the Lord will release her from it, because her father overruled her. Vows Made by Married Women And if she marries a husband while under a vow, or she uttered anything impulsively by which she has pledged herself, and her husband hears about it but remains silent about her when he hears about it, then her vows will stand, and her obligations that she has pledged for herself will stand. But if when her husband hears it, he overrules her, then he will nullify the vow she has taken and whatever she uttered impulsively that she has pledged to herself, and the Lord will release her from it. Vows Made by Widows But every vow of a widow or of a divorced woman which she has pledged for herself will remain intact. If she made the vow in her husband's house or put herself under obligation with an oath, and her husband heard about it, but remained silent about her, and did not overrule her, then all her vows will stand, and every obligation which she pledged for herself will stand. But if her husband clearly nullifies them when he hears them, then whatever she says by way of vows or obligations will not stand. Her husband has made them void, and the Lord will release her from them. Any vow or sworn obligation that would bring affliction to her, her husband can confirm or nullify.
But if her husband remains completely silent about her from day to day, he thus confirms all her vows or all her obligations, which she is under. He confirms then because he remains silent about her when he heard them. But if he should nullify them after he has heard them, then he will bear her iniquity. These are the statutes that the Lord commanded Moses relating to a man and his wife and a father and his young daughter who is still living in her father's house. New Testament Reading Galatians chapter 3 verse 15 through chapter 4 verse 7 Inheritance comes from promises and not law. Brothers and sisters, I offer an example from everyday life. When a covenant has been ratified, even though it is only a human contract, no one can set it aside or do anything to it. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his descendant. Scripture does not say, and to the descendants, referring to many, but, and to your descendant, referring to one, who is Christ. What I'm saying is this. The law that came 430 years later does not cancel any covenant previously ratified by God so as to invalidate the promise. For if the inheritance is based on the law, it is no longer based on the promise. But God graciously gave it to Abraham through the promise. Why then was the law given? It was added because of transgressions. Until the arrival of the descendant to whom the promise has been made, It was administered through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary is not for one party alone, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that was able to give life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise could be given because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to those who believe. Sons of God are heirs of promise. Now before faith came, we were held in custody under the law, being kept as prisoners until the coming faith would be revealed. Thus the law had become our guardian until Christ, so that we could be declared righteous by faith. But now the faith has come. We are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Chapter 4 Now I mean that the heir, as long as he is a minor, is no different from a slave though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. So also we, when we were minors, were enslaved under the basic forces of the world. But when the appropriate time had come, God sent out his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we may be adopted as sons with full rights. And because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, who calls Abba Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir through God. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Gracious and righteous and merciful God, we thank you for another day, a new day with new mercies. And, oh God, do we need them. We need a a reminder of your holiness, your righteousness, and your power and your sovereignty. But even more so, God, we need a reminder of your love, that your sovereignty holds hands with your love, that your power holds hands with your love and your compassion, oh God. And we thank you, oh Lord. That no matter what, what station or place we may find ourselves within this life, O God, through the completed work of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are now children of God. Because of the completed work of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are co-heirs with Christ. 
We thank you, O Lord. We thank you for the way in which the gospel has come and it has created a a new imagination for us about equity, about inclusion, about belonging, about community, about who is family, who indeed is a co-heir. And so we thank you, O Lord, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, that we are indeed the sons of God, not meaning a masculine form, but meaning a co-heir, that we inherit what Christ has won, what Christ has secured on our behalf. And so, oh God, no matter what, where we find ourselves within this world's system of stratification and this world's systems of racism and sexism and classism, oh God, we know that in Christ, because of your work, Lord Jesus, we are co-heirs. God, this gives us great hope and great peace. It also lets us know how to approach this day, the day that we are in, as we pursue a world that is more just and compassionate. We pray, O God, that you would pour out your spirit so that we might do justice. We might love mercy, O God, and walk humbly with you. It is in your name that we pray and we entrust ourselves in deep gratitude for being co-heirs with Christ. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth's Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag GetInTheWord and hashtag TruthsTable. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.